Let's talk about containers. In your bubble journey, you're going to be using containers. Hi guys, my name is Paul, your favorite no-code dev. It's so good to be hanging out with you today. Today, I want to discuss containers. In your bubble journey, you will always use containers every single time. Um, my, my other video, I talked about how you will set up your page. If you do not know how to set up your page, do go check out my other video. So you see how it works, how to set up a page. So one thing that you notice on your page is that you notice that your page itself is a container. So really, um, we can see container. Yeah, that's the default page container. If you come here, you would see the default of your page is page, page containers. One thing that you notice when you're developing with Bubble, you will see that the default name for your page is called a container. So this, your, your page is a very large group. It's a group and every other thing sits on top of this group. There are two ways you would use a container. One, you would use it for your UI. You know, this is your UI and every other thing. So if I put a, a, a add a color to this, I'm gonna add a, an orange color and turn it 10%. You would see this is going to serve as your UI, but also you can put data into your page. So you can see the type of content for your page might be a user. And when you do this, you can reference to any details of this particular user, of any user in your database, depending on how you're setting up your database security in your application. So now that you know that, let's go to the layout and explore a bit. In Bubble, you have your fist layout that has a fist width and a fist height. And also you have your aligned to parent layout. You have a mean width, a mean height, and a default width. And also you have your row, you have your container, your column. Yeah, you're not your container, you have your column. So let's go to the fist. So for fist, if we're using fist layout, I'm going to drag in another container, which is uh, this group, right? This group into it. And you will see that we can turn, take this to any part of the page. I'm going to come here and change the color, the background color here, and turn it to uh, green and give it 20%. Right, so you can see this our group, group A, and you can turn it, you can take it anywhere you want to take it to. Before Bubble launched its responsive engine, this is how you build up with Bubble, moving things all over the screen with no guidance. But it was still, it was still a cool thing. It was still a cool thing because Bubblers had no choice. The only way you could build application then was just using fist layout. But now with that different type of layout you can use it. There's also align to parent. So see what align to parent does? It aligns your your um, group the inner the inner group or the child group based on the position of the parent. So this is aligned to top, right? This is aligned to right this is aligned to left this is aligned to the side you know this is aligned to the middle this is left center this is bottom center this is bottom left and this is bottom right so you can see most of the time when you want to use align to parent this could work for very very tiny things in your application or things you want to put in a particular position for a very very long time then we also have the row and it's a very very cool thing if you want to learn more about role feel free to check, my, check out my other video in this bubble university so we have the row and everything you put inside the row just keep on going left of it so if i duplicate this column if I duplicate this column and this guy, it's a row. Let's change it to a row, right? And I'm going to give this another color. I'm going to give this other group B a different color entirely and make it 40, 40% 40 green or probably red, turn it 20% red. So you can see every time I put some, I, I put another child element into this container, into this particular parent container, it's going to move to the left. So you can see. It's going to move to the left, but when there's no space in the, on the left hand side, it moves to the bottom of it. So you can see the way it is. So I go back to layout. I'm going to change this to 4000. Don't worry. Change it to 4000. It's fine. And I'm going to change this to 1440. So if you want to learn about page setup, go check out my other video on page setup. So let's turn this to a different color entirely turn this to a different color and make it 20%. So I like to make it 20% because it, it just gives you a couple of different shades to work with. And also let's, let's turn this to a column. 
we go back here and we turn it into a column you can see for columns everything is stacked on top of each other so if you're building an application when that requires you to stack things on top of each other column is the best choice to go and also if you're building things for mobile with bubble I, I would tell you use column every single time but you see when you're building with bubble the one you start with your default parent container layout really doesn't matter too much so we have the column all the world really doesn't matter too much you can always decide to hide and show based on the layout or based on the action you want the user to perform also if we click on this column we'll see other things we have container alignments right container alignments can be on top it can be in the middle so now this is in the middle of this uh this is in the middle let's turn this to 1000 so you can see the entire screen turn this to 1000 so you can see the entire screen all right so this is in the middle and if i take turn this this will be at the bottom but it's it's feeling the entire place so you might not be able to see what i'm talking about so you can see it's at the bottom it's flowing all the way from the bottom if i take this it's going to be spaced in between right so everything is spaced equally and then here here it's also spaced in between but it's just going from the top of it so you can decide to run, fix your container alignment any way you want to uh, any way you want it to be you can decide to do so and also another thing you want to you want to see is that your your the child element which is the group we have on top of this can all will always in, inherit the properties of this particular container right it will always in inherit it if this container is a column this the parent also it's this child is going to even though it's a row it's going to have some properties of the parent which is the column right if it's a column it's going to have if this the parent element which is the parent container it's a row right this guy is going to have the is going to have properties of the parent uh, element and it's going to be the row properties that's something that you should note when you're building and also what we've discussed we've discussed the properties of the parent container but if you go to this if you go to this child container which is the group a you will see it also has its own element to the same thing with the parent so you can see it has face aligned to parent row column it has uh, a line uh, in the middle you can put it in the bottom it can be spaced in between space in between it just flows from the top all the way to the next element on the page so you can see these are things that you can do for yourself. For example, if you're creating and if you're creating a private, let's say you're creating a home page, this way you will likely create a home page. You just allow this to flow. This is going to be a row, and you'd have elements flowing from one part to another. And then you check this, and this is not going to. This is going to be no fixed width. And then you have a mean height of say 500, right? Okay, let's say 600 and that's our mean height and then we're going to add a group container inside of it that's going to be a column and it's going to be no fixed width and then we can give this column a background color and let's say this is going to be a blue hmm, very ugly right it's going to be a blue and then we can duplicate this this and on this one we'll just come back to the layout and we can make it flow from top to bottom make it flow from top to top to bottom give it a different color entirely let's say a red color 20 percent and you can see we have two different colors two different layouts right here this can be okay this can be for the secondary for the um for the image and this can be for the test and every other thing in between so right here you can you can try to figure out if your if your app is responsive or if it's not responsive depending on how you're doing it so you can see you can see the way it flows from top to bottom why because uh, we're building a very responsive application so that's it about containers uh next we'll discuss repeating group in a different video entirely go learn about containers leave your comment below and don't forget to leave a high five and subscribe to this channel there are some useful links below feel free to click on it and that's it for today bye